characters in Miraculous Ladybug are kind of quirky, because each of them has a life full of either total happiness or sadness. This time, we're diving into the lives of those characters who are having a tough time, or are on the brink of kicking the bucket, or have already unsubscribed from life. Some of the folks we're chatting about today are Natalie, Rose, Gabrielle, and a few others. Drop a comment about who this character is. Your answer might pop up in the next big adventure. When we see this boy, whether as Adrian or in his Chat Noir persona, we rarely stop to think about what lies behind that beautiful smile or those silly jokes. This young Frenchman experiences sadness, loneliness, and many other emotions. Since his beloved mother fell into a coma, Adrian has become even more isolated and has lived a sheltered life from an early age. According to our research, this may have caused him to experience depression. Living in seclusion for such a long time can lead a person to madness, aggression, anxiety, or disobedience. The saddest part of all this is that it manifested in our boyfriend, especially when he decided to escape from home to go to school and have a normal life and make friends. I believe this can justify why Adrian fell in love with Ladybug first and didn't acknowledge that he also had feelings for Marinette. Ladybug was the first girl to accept him as a friend and trust him without knowing him and without expecting anything in return. If you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, you would be telling Adrian, don't be sad, Adrian, because you have my friendship and all my love. At this point in the series, our lovely mother-in-law is back from the coma she's been in for a good while. Now she's stronger and healthier than a horse. However, to get to the point, Mr. Agrest had to jump through many hurdles, which Ladybug and Shot threw at him in every episode. This is just the tip of the iceberg, as this woman has been a victim of several health issues that seriously affected her and nearly cost her existence, plunging her into a deep slumber similar to a coma. Our boyfriend's mom was on the brink of being stiff forever, but Gabriel managed the situation in time and placed her in a capsule that kept her alive. If the capsule is unplugged, it stops providing the essential elements to keep her subscribed to life. Rumors suggest that she was herself to blame for falling ill. It's believed that she used the broken peacock miraculous relentlessly, causing her the same symptoms we saw in Natalie. We'll talk about these symptoms later in the video. In the first comment, I'm dropping a video where we discuss Emily being the main villain of the series. Check it out now because now that she's awake from the coma, this theory could slowly become canon and you need to prepare for this event. Lila Rossi, or should I say Cerise, because she has changed her name and look. Regardless of what she calls herself now or how she looks, she's a character who's uh, not right in the head because she thinks carrying out evil deeds is totally fine. And this is reflected in almost every episode she appears in. Every time I see Lila appear in an episode. All of Cerise's issues are housed in her mind and heart. Particularly, one of her problems is with Marinette. She harbors strong, irrational hatred and contempt for her, doing everything possible to cause her harm. Many of us think that this resentment stems from not having Adrian's attention and love. There's also another possible reason. There's a theory that reveals who Lila slash Cerise really is. According to this theory, this girl is Manon from the future, who somehow returned to the past to take revenge on those who ruined her plans at some point in her life. I know, this theory sounds super crazy, but it contains many credible details that shouldn't be underestimated. If you're interested in learning more about this theory, check out the pinned comment where I leave a video explaining it all. Whether or not the theory is true, it doesn't change the fact that Cerise has serious anger and hatred issues and is unwilling to forgive those who have wronged her in order to forget what has happened and be truly happy. In the hypothetical case that Lila is Manon from the future is true, her condition would be 100 times worse as she can control her resentments, leading her to lie on multiple occasions without caring about the problems she may cause. In short, she's a little lying machine. In fact, if you've heard a lie from Lila, comment LIAR! 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 We think it's possible that Cerise might be heading for a pretty sad fate. She's got the Miraculous on the butterfly, so she's likely to try grabbing the other Miraculous jewels, and she'll probably get her hands on several. So 
here's my prediction. Starting from the eighth season, Cerise is gonna go overboard with using the prodigies she's got, causing her the same health issues we saw in Gabrielle and Natalie. They might be even worse because she's totally nuts, leading her to unsubscribe from life. And that's my wild guess. I know it sounds pretty out there, but Miraculous Ladybug is no longer that innocent show we started watching years ago. Now it's a series that's open to exploring different themes, doing it subtly to avoid harsh criticism. To everyone watching this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, because you'd be saying, Cerise, stop being so bad or you'll end up kicking the bucket! In this section, I won't give too many details as I don't want the video to be even more depressing. Our dear Rose suffers from a very serious condition. Seriously, what she has is very severe. This poor girl has an illness whose name starts with the letter C. I won't explicitly mention the name in this video because of how shocking it is. Additionally, her condition is much graver and sadder compared to the characters you'll see in this video. The worst part is that this theory has numerous clues to support it. I won't explain further as we have discussed it in another adventure. You'll find the link to that video in the pinned comment. I just warn you that it's a depressing video. Our second mother-in-law is a lady who's lived through many unforgettable moments, but a lot of them were moments of suffering and deep sadness caused by Gabrielle Agreste. Now, what I'm about to say might sound fake, but it's totally legit. Natalie bit the dust in the last episode of the fifth season. She went to eternal rest with Mama Coco and North Kao, but she was brought back to life by Gabriel in the final moments of the episode. Besides Mr. Agreste, the broken turkey miraculous is another reason why Natty's life took a nosedive leaving to the event I just mentioned. Due to the excessive use of the broken jewel, she got some kind of curse that caused weakness in her body and coughing fits. Over time, these symptoms became more constant, reaching a point where she couldn't walk on her own anymore and had to use a strange contraption on her legs if she wanted to move around, or simply staying in bed under Gabrielle and Adrian's care. We also have a video where we give more details about the condition she was dealing with. I'll leave the link in the pinned comments so you can check it out. It seems like Natty and Emma are still alive, luckily, and that luck is called Gabrielle Agrest. Chloe Bourgeois is another character who isn't right in her head. She's even worse than Lila. Something that is easily evident is her classist attitude. She believes that being from a billionaire family puts her above the other characters and gives her the power to mistreat them. In addition to the aforementioned, this girl suffers from a condition. Before discussing this condition, I just want to make it clear that this is just a speculation, as although we have consulted advanced psychology students, we cannot offer for a precise diagnosis because we are solely basing it on the behavior of this character and not their entire life. Now that we have clarified that, let's delve into Chloe's behavior. It's possible that she suffers from the Emperor Child Syndrome, or in this case, the Emperor Teenager Syndrome. This syndrome causes the child or teenager to develop power and authority over their parents. In this situation, Chloe exercises a certain control over her father, the mayor who fears that his daughter will cause problems or throw tantrums. The symptoms that Chloe presents are the most common ones of this syndrome. The girl has tantrums in public spaces with the purpose of seeking attention from her parents or the people around her in order to obtain something specific. If she doesn't get it, she resorts to threatening those people with the power her father holds as the mayor of Paris. She constantly tries to sabotage her father's plans. Throughout the series, we have seen how the mayor makes decisions that are instantly undermined by Chloe, and her father has no choice but to give in to make his daughter happy. She displays irritability in situations she can't control. I believe it's unnecessary to explain further, as she acts that way in the majority of episodes. These are just a few of the symptoms that Chloe presents. I could mention more symptoms, but I consider it unnecessary since we all know what this girl is like. Out of all the characters we're talking about today, this one really bit the dust, and it's unclear if he's making a comeback from internal rest in the rest of the series canon. Our father-in-law fulfilled his wish to heal Natty and bring back his wife Emily, but in return he had to go to the other dimension. Behind his victory, there were many battles and serious health issues that almost knocked him out of life ahead of schedule, an act that was about to ruin all his plans. When Mr. Agrest started using multiple miraculous at the same time, his body couldn't handle so much power and energy, causing his health to collapse. 
first, it began with a kind of burns covering a large part of his body. What's most discouraging is that for Gabriel, there's no effective cure, just pain relievers. Over time, our father-in-law's body became fragile, eventually expelling ashes from his mouth as he was internally too affected. In the last episodes of the fifth season, they revealed that Gabriel only had a few days left until his subscription to life ran out. So, when he won the battle against Ladybug, he was in his last minutes or hours of subscription. The video has come to an end. I want to remind you that the links to the videos we mentioned today are in the pinned comment. I'm Kira, and I send greetings to everyone who interacted with the video. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye!